Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, should we start? Yeah. Okay, let's start. Uh, my name is Simon Wright. I'm the Director of Programming here at Japan House London, and I'm in Japan House at the moment in our library, uh, which uh, sadly at the moment is, is still closed, but we do look forward to opening shortly. And today we are looking at one of our previous exhibitions at Japan House, uh, Anno's Journey which were the world of Anno Mitsumasa, the work of Japan's prolific uh, illustrator and children's book illustrator and, and former teacher who is probably beloved by so many people in Japan having grown up with his works in their, their houses uh, as they were child, children. This exhibition was um, from the 22nd of August to the 27th of October last year. And we created an online uh, accessible exhibition for people to be able to tour themselves, even though it's not physically in Japan House anymore. Just before um, we start, I'll just run through a few things. Your webcam and your microphone will be disabled for the entire duration of this, um, but you will be able to uh, ask us questions uh, through the Q&A feature. Uh, which will be moderated by members of Japan House. You can send it with your name or anonymously if you wish. And uh, please note that the contents of this event will be recorded and may be shared afterwards. As I mentioned, you should have your videos of the participants on the right-hand side and the main part of the screen should be in left. We're extremely fortunate today as well to be able to uh, have this event uh, interpreted with British Sign Language um, thank you very much to Tracy, um, who is joining us all the way from Orkney today. Thank you very much indeed, Tracy. We're very much uh, appreciated to have you here with us today. Um, if you are wanting to watch the BSL interpretation, you can only see it on Zoom. So if you are watching on Facebook, uh, you won't be able to, to, to see the interpretation. So today we are joined by two wonderful guests. Thank you so much. We are joined by Kubo Kiriko, uh, acclaimed, internationally acclaimed manga artist. Thank you so much. And also Azumi Tomoko. Tomoko-san, thank you very much as well. You are a product designer and uh, uh, tutor uh, and all, all round design genius, I would say. <laughs> I think we're, we're, we're amazed to have so uh, such talented people with us and Anno Mitsumasa fans as well. So thank you so much. Uh, briefly, uh, Tomoko-san, you, uh, you were born in Hiroshima um, and you, you grew up in the west of Japan. And so that's, that's also where Anno Sensei came from. Yeah. Um, but of course, Tomoko-san was originally an, trained as an architect in Kyoto, that's correct, isn't it? And you came to London, mm -hmm. you um, studied at the RCA, you have also become a tutor at the RCA, you have your own design studio. And most recently for us, of course, you worked with us with uh, uh, your line of design products called The Geometrist, yes? Yes. Indeed, with a collaboration with uh, Takeo Paper. Correct. Yes, indeed. And we still have them available uh, to be seen here at Japan House, if you wish to visit. And we also have Kubo-san, thank you, Kubo Kiriko, who Hi. is welcome. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Yes, uh, thank you for me too. Oh, it's wonderful. Um, you, you are a manga artist, uh, yeah. highly acclaimed in Japan. Uh, you made your debut in the 1980s, that's correct, yes? And there was a yeah. Success with cynical hysteria hour. Yes. Yeah. That's right. And you are you've you've done so many things manga related. You've you've directed animation films. You 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 appear on numerous book covers. You've written books. You have uh, written so many other manga themselves. And we're very lucky to be able to have you joining us in this next month with a series of online manga masterclasses. Thank you so much indeed. 
we look forward to it very much. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much indeed. So you are both fans of Anna Mitsumasa. Um, oh, wonderful, thank you, Komoko-san. You have uh, Anna's journey there to Britain. Um, maybe, could you tell us a little bit about how you first came across Anna-sensei? Maybe Tom. Yeah, um, I knew Anna-sensei's books from my childhood. Um, there were some exhibitions in Hiroshima where I was, I lived for uh, my secondary school time of his original drawings, exhibition on his, his books as well. So I'm very, very yeah, familiar with his work for a long time. One of my book, it says that I bought it in 1987. Oh, goodness. Okay. And of course, of course, Ano Sensei started working really as um, um, an illustrator in the 1960s. He first became an illustrator when he was about 40. So he first had a career as a teacher and then started. But it's, you know, it's, it's, it's for over 50 years that he's had a career um, as, a, as an illustrator. And, and Kiriko-san, when did you first come in contact with Ano Sensei? I think it's compared to uh, Tomoko-san, I'm not kind of very core fan like her, but uh, when I was a childhood, maybe, you know, it's uh, uh, Anno's journeys and also that the Fushiginae, Fushiginae, you can say in English, I mean. And so it's kind of- Mysterious, I knew, mysterious yeah. pictures, mysterious yeah. pictures. Yeah. So I, I, I sing his work a lot, but uh, you know, recently in that uh, Japan house exhibition and see a lot of work which I didn't notice. So it's kind of amazed to see uh, a lot of variation. Also it's kind of history of his drawing, painting is really good chance for me to recover kind of him as an artist, and thank you for Japan House. Oh, well, thank you very much indeed. I mean, in, in fact, yes, shall we, shall we go and have a quick look at the online exhibition just to show how people can access the exhibition online through the Japan House website? And as you said, Kiriko-san, this, uh, this exhibition um, was actually the first in, in the UK mm. and of, of, of all of Anno Sensei's, uh, of any of Anno Sensei's work. And what we tried to do in Japan House was show a overarching view of his very many changing styles. Yeah, that is amazing part of point. And you mentioned Fushiginae, the mysterious pictures, of course, which were the first things that he, that he created. And he was very much influenced by Western uh, European uh, illustration, history, folklore, art, and that comes out very early on. And this picture, this, this, this exhibition, uh, takes us through the journey of his life's work. And it starts off, we started the exhibition here, as you can see maybe, with um, the first five syllables of the Japanese hiragana, the, the first five syllables of the Japanese alphabet. We start with a, and we have a, i, u, e, o. And Tracy has very, thank you. This is, this is the, the Japanese syllabary in, in, in Japanese sign language as well. Thank you so much. And this is very much showing how much Ano Sensei was, was really very much a teacher all the way through. He, he, he likes to be able to present things to people without, without telling them exactly what's in there. So it's, there's open, the viewer has an opportunity to discover what's in the pictures. And what we're going to look at today is not all of this, but very much uh, two pieces, two sections of the exhibition, which looked at Anno's journeys, and this was very much influenced by his own, Anno Sensei's own travels abroad in the early 60s. Okay, thank you very much. 
So everybody, after this, please do uh, log on to the Japan House website and you will be able to view the exhibition yourself. You can zoom in and you can move around the exhibition as you wish. Now, I'm going to try and share my screen again. Success. Can you see my screen again? Okay, good. Okay, we're first going to talk about uh, Tabi no Ehon, Anno's journey. Tabi no Ehon really means travel picture book. Yeah. yeah. And this book was, was, was first um, published, uh, I think in 1977. And it was, I think, originally just going to be a, a, a book on, on, on its own. But, but these, these, these books grew, the popularity was huge. I, I remember this book actually from the late seventies in, in English, and it was called Anno's Journey. So here I have the, the Japanese version here of the first Anno's Journey. And then we're going to look at two of these journeys um, because they became so popular, uh, Anno Sensei started to make more. And the third one was Anno's Britain. But of course we have others here. I've got lots. <laughs> we, have, we have number four, which was Anno's journey to the USA. We have Anno's number six I've got here. Anno's journey to Denmark. Mm -hmm. uh, Anno's journey number seven, which is to China. And I think which is really interesting is that, I mean, Denmark's important because he was fascinated by stories by Hans Christian Andersen. Wow, yeah. But if you look, the spine, they open differently. So oh. all the books that are to do with Europe open for, you know, with the spine on the left-hand side. But the book, the only one he did about China, the, the spine is on the right-hand side. So it opens from, you read it from right to left, whereas the Following other Following uh, how the written language is. Absolutely, which I think that attention to detail is marvelous. Yeah. And number eight, I have number eight here as well, which is actually um, Suwano, where he was born. Suwano in Yamaguchi Prefecture. Bind it on I mean, Shimane, Shimane Prefecture. We were talking about that it's almost Yamaguchi, my mistake. <laughs> Shimane Prefecture, which is culturally quite like Hagi in Yamaguchi Prefecture. Okay, thank you very much. So let's, uh, let's, let's go through. This is Ano Sensei. In which year was it? Um, I don't know what year this is, I'm afraid. We did have some earlier pictures of his time in uh, his first visit to, uh, to Europe, which I think is in 1963 was the first time he visited Europe. And this is in Strasbourg. We know that, I think, probably sometime in the 1970s, late 70s, maybe. I guess, maybe somebody else will know. Pencil in his pocket is nice. The pencil in his pocket? Yeah. Ah, that, I think that's quite a nice, a nice, a nice thing to, to notice. Actually, I, I when I met him um, on, on on a couple of occasions, I was lucky enough to be able to before the, the exhibition. I asked him what he preferred to do in by by way of drawing or painting or printing, or, and his favourite medium was to be able to sit outside and draw from life. Well, sketching is his favorite part, you mean? Absolutely, yes. And, and, and I think that as, as he became older and was, was, was not able to travel as much, though he still, he still did travel, that's when, of course, a lot of his work centered on, on, on Japanese subjects. Okay. And, of course, and, I, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm drawing my own conclusions here, but mm -hmm. one would assume that he enjoyed being able to, to sit outside in, yes, <laughs> exactly. 
cover of the first one, I think he is there sketching. There are definitely, I, I would think so too. Here it is, yes, that yeah. one there. Mm -hmm. I think so too. And you will find several references of people sketching. So you, the artist himself at work. Inside. Including him in the picture. Yes, very nice. And of course, I mentioned that he came from Suwano, which is in Shimane Prefecture, of course. Um, and another famous son of Tsuano, this small village um, in, in, in a valley in, in, in Shimane, right on the border with, with, with Yamaguchi, was this gentleman we can see here called Mori Ogai. Mori Ogai was born in 1862, and he was originally sent to Europe um, to, to learn military medicine in Germany, but he became fascinated with European literature and was in the end the first uh, translator into Japanese of European poetry. And he's, he's known for his, his novel, most famously, The Wild Geese, um, but also of, 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 his, of his work, his translation work of Hans Christian Andersen. So, and, and, and Anno Sensei mentioned when I, met, when I spoke to him that he would play in, in, in the area where, where Mori Ogai's house is, is still there, it's still preserved in this beautiful part of, of Tsuwano, uh, which uh, has preserved its, its samurai residences. And if I urge anybody to visit, if they do, hardly anybody goes there, but it's so beautiful. And in there, in, in, in Tsuwano, there is a museum uh, the Anomitsumasa Art Museum, which all of the images that we have shown today of, of Ano Sensei's work uh, have all come from that museum. So let us start with the first exhibits we had in the exhibition. This is Ano's Journey, uh, we called it. We, we weren't able to get the finished color originals because they don't exist anymore. Oh. Nobody knows where they are. Um, um, they may have been destroyed. I suppose maybe nobody thought that they would be so popular uh, that it would be necessary to, to have them. But what we do have are these proof prints which would have been used by the printer uh, in advance of, of printing the book. So these are, of course, uh, laid out for for the book it, it, itself. We have two pages of the book. So if I take there, we are. there is the version itself inside the book, and we have the uncolored black and white print. And each one of Anno's journeys takes the form of the protagonist, Anno Sensei, or somebody arriving in a strange land and uh, all by himself and going on an adventure. Uh, learning new things and, and, and solving problems uh, for himself. And here, just to highlight what is happening, we have th this lone traveler uh, buying a horse or, or, or renting a horse. Uh, from, from somebody he's met in this land. And Anno Sensei mentioned to me that it, this, this was just like he, his arriving in Europe for the first time in one of the lands, going to hire a car at a, uh, at a, a hire car center and then going off on the adventures all on his own. And this is at a time, of course, he was, a very, he was an independent traveler. He, he, he wasn't part of a group. He, he did it all by himself. And no internet to Google. No internet, exactly, exactly. Everything kind of in front of you at, uh, <laughs> by chance. Here we have, a, we, have, um, we have an artist at work again here in the middle. Unfortunately, because they're not colored, they're a little difficult to see. So what we've done is we've, we've blown something up here. Now, people who are watching may, may recognize some 
references here from European art. Ano Sensei was, was fascinated by, uh, in, in this particular edition of Ano's journey, was, was European art, folklore, history, architecture, scenery. Everything was put together in a kind of pan-European fantasy of, 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 what, of what life might be, might be like for, for, for this, this lone traveler. And we have here, in the background, we have a bridge which it appears uh, in, in painting by Vincent van Gogh. We have the bathers here by Georges Seurat. And we also have this scene here, which is also by, by Seurat, yes? I, I remember um, when I, I saw his book, early on then recognized some pictures from the art textbooks. I was very much interested in to see what is his hiding inside of the book. I think he wanted to cause that kind of interest to children who's viewing his books. I think so, exactly. And, and I find it interesting that there's no list really of created by him of, of what you can find. You have and to find yourself. You have to find yourself, yes. It's up to you to, to, to find it. I, I remember asking him whether there was a list so that we could, could help people. And he, no, 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 there isn't a list. And, <laughs> and people had created lists online and, and no, don't look at those. You, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a pleasure to find something new for each one, not to be told as a list. <laughs> Absolutely, and, and there's an ambiguity as well, and I think we'll find that later on. Is it or isn't it, or it could be? Uh, we don't really know. This is interesting, um, a Northern European scene, I'm not sure where. Anno's journey actually, I think, was a mixture of uh, memories and sketches and, 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 and photographs from his travel to Denmark, France and the UK, I believe. And we have one piece in here. Maybe, can you read that for me? There's, a, there's an annotation by Anno Sensei himself. It says Toru. Toru. Toru means taken away. Take away? Take away, yes, to, to take, take it away. And we think that what do we think he's taken? There's a, there's a mark here that he's he wants to have taken away. Um, but you say it's still in there, Tomoko, is it? Yes, yeah, in the book. I think they it that looks a piece which he didn't like. It looks like um, horses dropping while horses carrying things. And he says, yes, take away. But it's still printed here in the book. And then, yeah, looks like... Horses, yeah, dropping. <laughs> so maybe uh, the printer doesn't want to take away, take out, or just accidentally, or there's just so it's much fun. How do yeah. you think, Simon? <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. But yeah, this is what I think we see a lot on European road and pavements as well. So I think. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Still here in it's London. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Here we have another scene. Um, you, you, when, you, when you visit the exhibition online, you will, you will hear the sound of a train. Uh, there is a train, a steam train, which goes through Tsuwano, uh, the Yamaguchi Go. And it, it comes from Hagi, I think, and, and, and it comes into, into, into Tsuwano. And here we have a train. Ano Sensei was, always likes to put a train somewhere, it seems. He's very fond of trains. And at the bottom here, we have, I don't know if we can see necessarily, we have the musicians of Bremen at the bottom. And in each of these pictures, the Anno, the, 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 the traveler, Anno, is, is always on a horse somewhere. And I don't know, can we find him in here? Yeah, he's just um, of all. Oh. oh, yes, he's on the left hand. Um, yeah, okay, I have a colored version. 
is here. Oh, I see. Yeah, on the black and white one is quite difficult to point, but the color yeah. one is much more obvious. Yes, thank yeah. you, Michael. thank you. Indeed, there he is, up there. And so in every one of these pictures, you will find um, Anno or the, 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 the lone traveler going through. Here we have, um, there he is, there's the lone traveler in the middle, isn't it? But this is, um, have we highlighted it? I can't remember. Yes, we have. This is um, showing something from Don Quixote. Yes, we have Don Quixote and Sancho Panza here. We have the story of uh, the enormous turnip here. And then we have over here a reference to a painting by Corbe called The Meeting. So he's mixing history, folklore, fairy tales, paintings from, from, from 19th century uh, painters, all in one picture. And here we are nearly towards the end. We have, so this is the second from last picture, I think, or nearly, or third from last maybe of, of, of Anno's journey. What do we have? So we have up here, it's difficult to see in the black and white version. It's much easier in the, in the color version. Oh, Tomoko-san, thank you. Um, exactly. I think the red gives it away, yes. Thank you. It's a uh, red riding hood and the wolf. So um, a reference to one of, I think it's, 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 it's German fa uh, fairy tale, isn't it? We have here, we have a dog. That's a dog looking into the stream uh, from Aesop's fables. We have here the shepherdess with her flock, a reference to a painting by Millet. And we also have another painting reference here by, from Millet, which is the gleaners. Where is it? Oh, yes. The gleaners, just above the dog, yes. Yeah. That's right. Thank you. And then in our last picture we have of Anna's journey. Oh, we have some more, we have some more. What do we have here? What does that say? Yogore toru. Yogore toru. <laughs> Yogore toru means take away the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that dirt is taken away. That's taken away, okay. The final version doesn't have it. Okay, fantastic. Okay. And then and the next picture is this. Um, Ochibo Hiro, no, it's not. It's who's, is this Mie too? This is Mie as well. This is also mm -hmm. Mie. This is the Angelus. Yeah. Fantastic, thank you very much. Well, there we go. That's, that's, that was our contribution to, to, to Anna's journey with these <laughs> original um, printing proofs. Um, but of course, we were very lucky to be able to show these, but of course the, the most, satisfaction comes from the book itself i think the fact that these are that you can every time you turn a page you find something new i think so the next annals journey that we featured in the exhibition was annals britain in japanese it's simply number three of the of the picture picture travels <laughs> But in, in, in English, it's called Annals Britain. And Anno Sensei visited Britain in 1981 to, to consolidate this, this particular book. Um, just to show you what it, where it was shown in the exhibition, we had Annals Britain around the central part of the exhibition. So when you visit online, you'll be able to find it around the central part these triangle shapes, um, beautifully designed by Sohoko to imitate or reference the mountains that surround Suwano, where, where Anno Sensei was born. Okay. So you'll be able to find all the pictures from Anno's Britain in our exhibition around the central part of 
reading coin. Now, this is the first part from Arnold's Britain. Yet again, a lone traveler arrives, this time at the White Cliffs of Dover. That one. Yes? Emerson, can I mention? It's not easy to see, but he added lots of lots of tiny lines on that page. It shows that um, the traveler is resting under the tree under a rain. That is his first arrival. I see. So he's, yes, you can see the lines just here actually against very, the. Very, yes, fine lines. Thank you. He arrived in Britain. Maybe it was raining when he arrived. Wow. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Here we go. So this is one of his pictures. Where is he? He's here buying the horse, isn't he? Up here on the top right hand corner. And what we notice here is that he starts a, a, a story. He starts here next to these Kentish oat houses. He has a story of Jack in the Beanstalk. And he also has Sir Isaac Newton underneath the apple tree. Apple is falling. Yes. <laughs> and sheep, which we haven't highlighted, but. And I think what's fascinating about these, the, these pictures is that this is the next set of pages. And the traveler on the top left here is, is starting his journey, is that Anno Sensei continues the story and we have Jack from Jack in the Beanstalk running away from the giant with the goose that laid the golden egg next to Stonehenge. And also a mini Stonehenge. Or children. <laughs> Yes, I think so, which, which is, it, I, 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 I love this playfulness that, that Arnold Sensei has. There's a sense of humor always. Here. So this is the Greenwich Observatory. And this is Shakespeare's birthplace in Stratford. <laughs> and this is a cottage near Stratford. Now, what I find interesting here is that we have um, a maple dancing. Now, Tomoko-san, you reminded me, thank you so much, that in the back of the, the book in, 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 in Japanese of Anno's Britain, it mentions that uh, Anno-sensei, uh, you look, found a book called Anno's Britain. And uh, I was Britain, sorry, called Britain, the best, the best of British villages or a book of British villages. And we did some, we did some investigation. So we had the name of it and, and we found, we found this book. Here it is. And it's the AA book of British villages. And we discovered that it was, it was printed in 1980. So it was first published just before an um, Sensei went to Britain. And we had a look through. Oh, Simon, this yes. statue is Happy Prince? Yes, that's with right. Oscar Wilde with Sparrow. That's right. Sparrow and the statue. Oh, that's... I didn't notice that. <laughs> and and it's, all, it's also, he plays with perspective. No, you're quite right, it is the Happy Prince. He's playing with perspective here as well, isn't he? He's, he's kind of putting them on the same level. But what I wanted to show you here was in this book, I found a picture of Maple Dance. <laughs> and I'm wondering whether he took inspiration from from that, that, that old photograph for, for, this, for this picture. But I, I, I like the way that he mixes locations with, 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 with complete play playfulness. And this, this is, this is Kelmscott, isn't it? I believe Kelmscott. Yeah, I think Kelmscott Manor is on the left-hand side, top corner. 
up here. I think that's where um, William Morris lived. Home of it? William Morris, yes, yeah. exactly. In this village. Yeah, and, and then um, I, I noticed on this page that there is a pub sign um, on the right hand bottom corner. Yes. And that is uh, the same picture of this long traveler on the, ho on the horse. Mm -hmm. It's repeated there. And then I thought, okay, this must be a pub named Robin Hood. This one here, yes? Yes. Yes, indeed, this, these, these, these little pointed hats uh, that, that Ano Sensei has used, um, little elves, but also medieval, uh, European medieval type, type uh, clothing. Mm -hmm. And green. And green, so there yeah. you go. So maybe, yes, I thought he um, thought himself as, uh, how do you call it, Sh Shival Ross Roba? How do you call that, Simon San? Um, the, 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 the Robin Hood, the Robin Hood, um, robbing the rich to, 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 to feed the poor. Mm -hmm. I think that's what he, he wanted sort of um, mimic himself into that. That's what I read. Um, a, a popular hero, I, I yes, and, and why not? Giving, yes, so the richness of culture to to the Japanese kids, maybe. Fantastic. And he certainly has, well, and, and little known outside Japan, um, unfortunately, I, I think, I think, I hope his books get published more in this country. Yeah, I think so too. Here we have Canterbury Cathedral and of course Canterbury is famous for the Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer and, and here he's included the pilgrims, some here and also some over here uh, from the Canterbury Tales. Can I mention one thing Simon San? There is um, on the left hand left hand side. There is a um, penny farthing rider on this village. Um, on the left, yes, there. Yeah, I think he saw Anno Sensei saw some of those um, old bicycles like I have behind of me. Say, or maybe he'd visited you. <laughs> <laughs> you have penny farthings behind you. Yeah, but it's very interesting mixture of times, which is which causes us a lot of thinking as well. Absolutely, he doesn't. He's not afraid of mixing a scene from the Middle Ages, something from the early twentieth century, uh, something from maybe the present day. Here we have the artist drawing again. This is called London Bridge. And I thought when I first saw it that, you know, it's, it's that, that's Tower Bridge, not London Bridge. <laughs> but of course, he, 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 he knows exactly what he's doing. And we have London Bridge here. It's kind of a trick to uh, tower, tower Bridge in the front. Yeah. I think so. I think he knows exactly what he's doing with this picture by say, and by, by calling it that. The London Bridge is falling down, a reference to a, 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 very, a, a song, a children's song, children's uh, singing game. I don't know how easy it is to see, but we have Humpty Dumpty. Yeah, that one, I didn't notice at all. Right. Hanging on the side there at the top. There are several things in here. I'm not quite sure. We have the Tower of London, of course. We have Tower Bridge. There is, there's the Lone Traveller. We have here, I think, though we're not sure. I think this is the Queen. <laughs> With her corgi. <clears throat> I think so. I think so. And I think and I'm not sure here, maybe somebody can help us, I'm not sure, but I think this may be the child catcher from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> yes, 
Yes. And I, I think this is a reference to the film A Man for All Seasons. Mm. Thomas More being taken to the tower. And this uh, lady with, with umbrella must be someone too. I would suspect so, yes. Yeah, yeah. But um, I wanted to ask you, Kiriko-san, mm. that this bird's view and then showing some uh, far away bird's eye view yeah. must be very difficult to, to depict those stories. But what, what would you think about this? Yeah, actually, you know, you can't fly like a bird, so it's really this angle it must be quite high mm. so he really used his imagination because you know at the time maybe he doesn't have any any kind of device to fly to you know filming or shooting not not um, drawing yet <laughs> yeah yeah not yet but uh, like seems like he that's that kind of thing that kind of angle i understand your question so it's amazing. Yeah, it's there is a skill, isn't it? That, mm, yeah. yeah. He has some sense about, you know, height and angle, you know, mm. even it's not actually he can't see, but it's calculated in his head and mm. uh, recreate on the paper, I guess. Yeah. It's amazing. In fact, I'll, I'll take that up. I, I spoke to him about the angles as well. Mm -hmm. One thing he said was that when he first arrived in Europe by aeroplane, the excitement mm. of out onto the, the landscape below and how he wanted that kind of wonder to be able to, to be tran trans translated into, into his books. Mm -hmm. However, I, I see there is a, a lot of pictures like this, you can see. Ah, that is... Very nice. That's the book which he mentioned in at the afterword. That's right. This this book, British Villages. British there are many pictures like that inside, which are aerial photographs. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think he's quite fascinated by this, this 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 ability to be able to see down onto. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I understand the feeling because once I came to England, I think it's uh, some, uh, you know, uh, Lake Kebik's, uh, how do you say that, uh, ash is affects to the old fright. So it changed to the root and I fly on the Thames like this. It's uh -huh. really stunning view, you know. So if mm -hmm. you can fly near to London, it's... It's like a Disneyland or Peter Pan ride. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, indeed, you're right. You're right. Actually, that that flight down the Thames towards mm. Heathrow is it's quite magnificent if you can see. Um, somebody's just told us that this person might be Mary Poppins. Ah, right. That's right. Okay. Yes, of course. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, she's uh, in a in a dress like Mary Poppins. Possibly. Yes. Possibly. Yeah. We have one 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 question has come through, which is this is a historical question, really, or a, or a comment that maybe um, is there a, a a correlation? Is there a is there a comparison here with Anno Sensei's? narrative, his way of telling stories, which are like Heian picture scrolls. Wow. Medieval picture scrolls. Yes, yeah. With, with, um, if you had then tiny bit of clouds on from both sides, that could be. That is very true. Um, rolls. Exactly. So these picture scrolls were rolled, yes? So you, you, you move along it's and several things happen at the same time in a different right. patch. Yeah, that's right. Same same person appears many times. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that is a very interesting view. Yes. Good. Good to think about perspective, 
the person appears the same time, um, all, all irrelevant to, to what we would think of as, as, as in, in the way that European pictures were cre created at the same time. Mm -hmm. This is, well, we've got the Houses of Parliament with the clock tower, usually known as Big Ben. We have Liberty, the shop Liberty here. <laughs> Just across the street. <laughs> and we have uh, the guards parading in front. We have a pipe, pipe and drum band here, Highland Pipers. Household cavalry at the back. Here is the lone traveller watching the parade. <laughs> I, I think he probably would have seen changing of the guard, maybe. Yeah. But we must remember, of course, this was 1981. This was the year um, of, of the, the royal wedding of, of, of Prince Charles and the then Lady Diana. And also in this picture we have, in the corner here, we have a reference to the statue of Peter Pan in Kensington Gardens, just down the road from Japan House. <clears throat> St Paul's Cathedral and Piccadilly Circus together. I remember <laughs> I remember, Tomoko-san, you, you mentioned the flea market books that, that, that Anno-sensei created. Yeah, it's titled Nominoichi, flea market. That's it, isn't it? Yeah, flea market. Flea market, flea market yes, Nominoichi. Yeah. Um, this, this, these scenes are very close to what he did for that book. Absolutely. Got different stalls. Different stalls, different categories and lots of goods. And then you mentioned about those um, Union Jack as the parasol, which are his addition, isn't, isn't it? Yes, indeed. And I'm wondering why he did so many Union Jacks actually. But maybe he saw them in 1981. Maybe he was here when London was celebrating the Royal wedding. Royal wedding and, and getting ready for it or uh, being prepared. The streets decked with flags. We have the Queen again here in the bottom left hand corner. I think it's the Queen. Oh, yes, with her corgi. Oh, but that, that doesn't look corgi. No, it doesn't look like a corgi anymore, does it? So it might not be the Queen. I might be wrong. <laughs> I, need, I need my um, magnifier to see. Ah, that looks very Queen, though. Yeah, with a headscarf, yes, maybe. Yeah. A cat as well. And here we have Trafalgar Square. We have somebody feeding pigeons in Trafalgar Square. We have Speaker's Corner by Hyde Park in the top right hand corner. We have these different faces from British history. Winston Churchill, I think. Yeah, that is, can you see it better? Ah, uh, yes. Henry VIII. Henry VIII, yes. One of his wives, I guess. I reckon. Anne Boleyn. Anne Boleyn. Yeah. I, I wonder what's the very last one next to Henry VIII. That doesn't look like a human being. <laughs> I can't see him very well, I'm afraid. I wonder who it is. And of course, here we have the Beatles. Probably um, the most famous British band in 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 Japan. Still, maybe yes. even everybody mentions the Beatles, of course. And, and here they are playing in Trafalgar Square. This is Windsor Castle, and this is an ode to to Shakespeare. And of course, Anno Sensei did illustrate several Shakespeare books in in Japanese. Really? Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> So he has a basic knowledge about his play. I think so. I think so. Probably more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> and here 
so in, in, in Windsor Castle, the grounds of Windsor Castle, we have some references. Maybe somebody can correct me, maybe I'm wrong, but we, we think here, right at the very bottom, maybe a scene from the Merchant of Venice. Because of course we're we're guessing we 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 he didn't there's no list telling us where they actually do exist. Yes, yeah, sorry, Tom Nicholson. No, no, I think I think that that one is very correct. I think okay, Merchant of Venice, and then here on the far left, maybe from Macbeth, maybe the soldiers, in the Forest of Dunsinane, maybe, and then on the bottom right we have Hamlet. And then maybe top right here, maybe something from King Lear. Yeah. Yeah. Castle is uh, Edgar reading King Lear. I just uh, check. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, Edgar is the son of the Gloucester, but uh, framed by his half brother. Mm -hmm. And he guys as a beggar's tom. Oh yes, you yes. remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he didn't tell his uh, Edgar, but uh, he kind of protect him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> 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 so did out. <laughs> but uh, it's. I mean, it, each one of these is so rich. Each one of these pictures is so rich. Now this one, this is one of my favorite pictures, I think, from Anne of Britain. There's a very obvious, um, reference, I think, at the top here to Constable's The Haywain, the picture which you'll find in the National Gallery, up here. And then there are a couple of references to, Gray to Kenneth Graham's The Wind in the Willows, here. I think it's Ode and, and, and over here in the caravan as well, with Ratty and Badger, yes? Yeah. Um, I'm not so sure. I think this must be a reference to something at the bottom here. Yes, I, I'm, I'm not sure either. Yeah, this, this is, maybe someone can tell us. Yeah, I hope so, maybe. Um, I, I really don't know, I'm afraid. But this, and I was very, I was very surprised to discover. But we go back to, we go back to this book. And what I noticed that also that, and also, I remember he told me as well that he was very fascinated by the works of craftsmen in these villages and what they did. So the blacksmith, the chair maker, the, the cooper who makes barrels and the like. And then I found this. <laughs> and, and also there's a there's a reference here from uh, from this book which which he's included in this illustration of people making making a house yes there's the hay I think yes as, as Simon mentioned about this um, flea market book that he dedicated, Anno Sensei dedicated one page for carpentry tools. And that was, yeah, his, his interest in those how to build things were really big, I guess. I think so, yes. These um, tools and it's yet again this idea of categorizing like from the flea market, these, these pictures here, yes. I mean, or from this book again, seem to be, he seemed to be very, very interested in this. We have a question. I quite from from one of our one of our, our um, viewers on Facebook. Which British children's illustrators could Anno be reasonably compared with? Um, oh. and his influence in Japan. So, who in Britain would 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 we say could be could be compared with Anno Sensei? Because Anno Sensei, of course, is extremely popular in 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 Japan. It's I, I don't know many of British book illustrator or writer. <laughs> what do you think? I think somebody like Quentin Blake, maybe. 
um, who who illustrated the, the Roald Dahl books. And, mm. and I think somebody like that would be would be comparable that a lot of people know and instantly recognize his his work maybe mm -hmm. and also um Anderson's drawing is seen you know character seen but uh, like a Quentin Blake is like a more focus for the character human being so it's a scale is slightly different mm. Mm. absolutely Absolutely. I wonder. It's a difficult question. <laughs> yes, maybe yeah. uh, British people know, yeah, know yeah. That <laughs> about those uh, artists who made lots of books. I think what we wanted to do with the exhibition was to just show how important Anno Sensei was mm -hmm. actually, um, and, for I, years, and to introduce him to a British audience in London. Mm. I'd like to know who's equivalent in this country, then I'd like to have a look of, of those books in an opposite way. But very nice question. Thank you for that question. There we have, oh, we have a question. Hello from Italy. Wow. Somebody from Italy. Did Anno Sensei ever visit and illustrate my country? Uh, where can I find the books in Italian or English or maybe in Japanese? Oh. Well, yes. Sensei did go to Italy. There is a whole book, Anno's Italy, which I think is number two. I is believe. it number two? I, I have it uh, with, with me. Shall I, shall I check? Okay, you carry on. I will check. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so very much the Italian Renaissance was uh, Florence. The beautiful cities of Italy were very much um, part of, of Anno Sensei's um, imagination of, 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 of Europe. Yes, um, you can find his books. He, um, it doesn't matter what language they're in, actually. His books are, are all uh, illustrated without, without language. And so you can, you can find them um, online. And, and also, um, we, have, we, have, we have books in Japan. Yeah. House. Okay. Yes. Anno's My Journey number two, I think it features, um, this is Firenze, isn't it? That's Florence, yes, that's yeah. right. Florence. Yeah. Duomo. This is the one. And we have another question here. This is interesting. This is interesting. I'm interested to know your opinion on how Anno Sensei depicts European and British cultural references. Um, could or could not be compared to what uh, Western artists would depict cultural references of Japan in their travels. Oh. Interesting. So yeah. it's talking about taking up stereotypes, maybe, of mm -hmm. what would what would somebody from Europe do in Japan and what would I, I, I have something to say maybe because there is this book about China. Mm -hmm. So it's not Anno, Anno Sensei didn't only go to Europe. He did. He did, and he was very, very much interested at this particular time in Chinese. Well, he still is interested, immensely interested in 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 Chinese history and the the, the sense of the weight that that Chinese. Uh, literature and, and, and culture, uh, ha the influence it has on Japanese mm. civilization. I mean, this is a picture of, I don't, this is a picture from, of his book from China, Building a Bridge. What do you think? Do you think that he has, how it compares with, uh, say, a, 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 a European artist traveling in Japan? Um, for me, um, um, Edward Morse, um, who was he American, who left lots of lots of sketches of um, early Meiji of Japan in um, the end of nineteenth century. He kind of didn't have any prejudice and then um, sketched a lot of lots of things he saw. Um, for me, Anno Sensei's attitude is that he's want to sketch 
he what, what he was interested in and then to introduce that to Japanese audience. Um, yeah, Bruno Taut left lots of sketches as well of his, his visit to Kyoto. I kind of categorize Anno Sensei to, to that sort of people in the wrong way. Like a pure interest and uh, kind of fresh eyes to see fast things everywhere. Yeah. Also, sort of, he started to read um, what we had in our, what we have in our modern life. Lots of those roots came from Western culture. He, I think, found a um, connection of it too, I guess. I think there is a certain freshness and excitement of viewing uh, the landscape. Mm. Lush, it's green. Look how green it is. I think you know, in com compared with 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 um, landscape in Japan, uh, there there isn't necessarily this this great open expanse of green. Mm -hmm. And I think that comes across in these pictures. And also, yes, he was moved by the beauty of small villages, not the large um, developed towns and cities. That's so right. that that kind of yeah, kind of yes, warning of to the environment as well. That's um, it, he said on the four uh, afterwards too. So yeah, I think it's kind of mixed messages he's been having in his travel, and then he wanted to be neutral to leave notes. I think ab absolutely. I, I think as well. One one maybe one thing maybe that I think is significant about Anno Sensei is that he was already so knowledgeable when visiting. He, he has so much interest and knowledge as well. You know, his knowledge of Shakespeare, um, his, his, his knowledge here of, of, what do we have here? The Loch Ness Monster, uh, the, the Johnny Walker, uh, uh, from from you know from the, the whiskey whiskey label we have Dick Turpin I'm going to go back in the middle we have Dick Turpin in the middle here I think hiding under the tree waiting to 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 hijack this this stagecoach and then one more Shakespeare uh, bottom is yeah. resting under the tree in the top right hand corner all these references I I wonder how well somebody going to Japan from Europe would be able to portray these. I, I, I find his knowledge and and and, and interest. It, it, Many contemporary it, artists are doing it. I, I, I find it incredible. I find it incredible that he that he he he's been able to 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 create a momentum throughout all of these books that through the the journeys. Okay, and this is the final picture. As with all of the journeys of Anno Sensei, they, they finish with the lone traveler leaving the country. Here we have the man, boy, who, who he's sold the horse to, waving goodbye as he leaves a Scottish shore, I think, maybe. Yeah. And um, yes, Tom, of course, please. Yeah, at the, after that page, there is one illustration like this that I think it's showing this royal wedding celebration of from his street view that he saw. He's one of the audience here with the, um, the Union Jack baby. You're absolutely right. Um, I, he may well, he's, he's definitely in there. Yeah. We tried to find we tried to find this this image as well, and this image doesn't exist either. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, this is the yes royal wedding itself. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it, it refers to 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 his time, nineteen eighty one, when he visited the UK and the time of the royal wedding. Um, Rumor has it that he might have given it to the Princess of Wales. <laughs> Translation. <laughs> now he don't have he don't quite deep somewhere. <laughs> not it's not in Suano. It's not in the museum in Suano. That's all. 
I think that's all we have time for, I'm afraid, today. We've had so many questions through and, and we've, we've, we've been able to answer a few. Thank you so much, indeed. Um, we, maybe, maybe we'll be able to do this again sometime, but Japan House will be open <laughs> uh, in, 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 the, in the coming few weeks. Um, we'll be able to please look out for when we uh, will be opening to our next exhibition. And uh, we have something exciting coming up uh, for you when we are able to open. At the moment, our ground floor in Japan House is, is open and there, there are plenty of things to see there as well, including books by Anno Mitsumasa. We also have books here in the library. Um, that's not open just yet, but uh, when we're able to open, you'll be able to see books by Anna Mitsumasa in the library here as well. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Tomoko-san. Thank you, Kiriko-san. Thank, Thank you very you. much for joining us today to talk about Anna sensei um, We have a couple of things coming up. Kiriko-san, you'll be with us uh, on three dates coming up, Wednesday the 15th, Wednesday the 29th, and Wednesday the 12th of August. We're delighted and extremely honored to have um, online masterclasses with you. This for all manga fans or for anybody who enjoys drawing, I think this will be extremely special. We're very privileged. Thank you very much indeed. These are uh, demonstration workshops. You can draw along uh, with, with, with Kiriko-san. You, you'll be doing it with pen and ink, is that correct? Uh, yeah, pencil line and ink in later, and mm -hmm. in the first, first session. And second, third is a different technique I will show. Wonderful. So on Wednesday the 15th, we have developer manga storyboard. Yeah. And on Wednesday the 29th, we have inking manga patterns. I'm extremely excited about these. These will be Thank wonderful. you. Oh, we're well, extremely honoured. And then on the 27th of July, we have an online demonstration with Takahashi Hiroko. Now, it never surprises me, never fails to surprise me, I should say, how everything gets connected in Japan. <laughs> and I know that Tomoko-san, you have, you, have, you have a kimono, yes? By, yes, by... kimono and obi by her. She's a yeah, good friend of mine from... And 15 years or something like that by now. Yes, um, I'm so glad to, for, to, to have her on, on your web um, demonstration. I wow. need to book it myself. We're looking forward to that as well. And I have, I have actually one of the, the masks here. Oh, wow, that is brilliant. She made a lot, a, a lot of them from the starting of the lockdown. And then she gave, um, uh, boxes and boxes to her local hospital. They all look so cool. That's well, nice. I won't have. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we have them in Japan House. And, oh, you sell that? Yeah, well, all, oh, and the staff members are wearing them as well. So, so when, 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 you, when you can, please do. Yeah, okay, cool. Thank you very much, everybody, for, <laughs> for joining us, everybody at home, and especially, of course, to Kubo-san and to Azumi-san. And Tracy, thank you so much from, from Orkney for, for interpreting for us in, in British Sign Language. Um, it's, been, it's been wonderful to have you with us. Thank you very much. Uh, we look forward to seeing everybody again and uh, we'll see you soon, I hope, and stay safe. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.